uh, disagreement over whether to accept the relation of a sectarian Muttadi, who does not become Kafir <laughs> through his adherence to his sectarian doctrine, in brackets, Bidda. Some flatly reject his transmission, okay. arguing that he becomes a Farsic because of his sectarianism. They argue that, just as the person who arrives at his false doctrine through interpretation and the person who does not are equal in terms of sectarianism, uh, they are also equal in wrongdoing. Some accept the transmission of someone sectarian if he is not someone who views as licit telling lies to further his doctrine, or for the sake of the adherence of his doctrine, irrespective of whether he is a proselytizer for his sectarian doctrine or not. Some scholars ascribe his view, this view to Shafi on the basis of his statement, quote, accept the text testimony of the sectarians, Ahlul Ahwa, except the Shia, Khattabiyya. Khattabiyya. <laughs> uh, since they uh, view as licit, testifying falsely in favor of those who agree yeah, with them. Yeah, this is Shafi. And this is, yeah, this is a sore point. For example, uh, first of all, the issue of that, that the sectarianism means necessarily fisk is wrong. Mm. This is because sectarianism is another point of view. And he adopted it because he believe it to be correct. So how can be he fasik? That's not true. This is because the, he will regard you. He could also, uh, with equal measure, regard you with the other point of view as a fasik. So this is, this is ends nowhere. And this is, this is, uh, this is simply wrong. And, uh, even calling that bid'ah is the only problem is that you make, if you make it a deen is a bid'ah. But we'll discuss that maybe in other session by itself about that, uh, the issues of various issues of aqidah are only, be, or they, or they call issues of aqidah only become a really bid'ah if you make it a deen. If you say it's a philosophical issue we are discussing or a scientific or a mathematical or a uh, aesthetic issue, that's not a problem. But the moment you make it a deen and you will, Assume that it will be questioned whether or Yom Al-Qiyamah, then you are assuming that it was Sharia without evidence. That's what will be then with that. So, to give an example, I'm going to examples because everyone listening will be in a state of shock. For example, the issue of Khalq al-Quran mm. that was inflamed by yesterday, Mu'tazara inflamed it when they would try to force people to say the Quran is makhluq, is created. That Quran is created, not created, or maybe this cannot be said this or that. This is just a statement of Philosophical or metaphysical statement. Maybe, maybe it's even not, not, not a statement which can be scrutinized because it has to be subdivided in portions. And pieces like a shara said, no, no, Quran is that's what is written in the books and so on is an Arabic language that's created. But what's in the divine entity, in, in the, in the mind of the divine, if you, if you wish to say it, that's, that's not created. So it is not what we need with Quran. What is it, Quran? So this is not muharrara, it's not properly developed and elaborated, so it can be judged or not judged. So all these points of view may be metaphysical, respectable metaphysical studies, but the moment you make it a deen, like a mu'tazila, and you carry the people by force on it, that's you are then going into the bid'ah. But actually the same side, the, other, the opposition by Ahmed bin Hanbal, that he said, no, no, Quran is not makhluq, and if you say it's makhluq, you are a kafir, he's also committing a bid'ah. Same thing, that's mu'tazila and this mu'tazila. Now the people regard Muhammad as Imam of Sunnah because that's the point of view which survived, or because he he opposed the government and remained patient and enduring. But that does not mean that he's right or wrong in the point of view. Nor does mean that. But but do we definitely say that he declaring it to be a deen? That is wrong because there's no evidence that he, that's part of the deen that Allah ordered us to study if the Quran is created or not. He orders that this is my speech. It contains my commandments. How the speech comes from the divine being is irrelevant, has nothing to do with that. So this is, this is an example, an extreme example, usually used by the Sahaja, Allahu Akbar, khalas. If you hear, they hear that, they become, their eyes become red, and they have a, a an, almost like a, an, an allergy shock. But this is the reality of it. The true reality of it is that is, this statement may be true or false, may be philosophical, may be aesthetical, may be logical, but mm. deen, it is not deen. The yeah. only the Quran is the speech of Allah. What does it mean the speech of Allah? It represents what Allah wants from us. Like my speech represents for you what I want from you. How my speech come out? Is it air vibration? Is it a brain wave? It's utterly irrelevant for that. The same there. In the case of the speech of Allah, this is, we're going to the divine being, the divine attributes. You cannot make that deen a divine attribute and scrutinize it and enforce on it a certain point of view as a deen. Except to the Sharia evidence. Now there is no Sharia evidence for this or this. And maybe it says none of these statements correct. Maybe it's partly correct only. We don't know. 
and you may study it and may declare you to be mentally retarded or deranged by, by, by not much agreeing with me, but I cannot declare you to be fasic or committing haram by this because this is a sharia statement. Haram and fiscal sharia statement is not of a rational statement. So that's the way the bid'ah comes. So all of this is just fighting people, fighting against each other because of, because of uh, transgression and, and human desires. That's it. Both sides. Both sides. Both are involved in bid'ah when they are. So, whom you reject and accept. This is all nonsense. So the claim that the Muqtadi is fasic by necessity is the one having the opposing point of view claiming. And he claims about you the same. The same with what Muqtadi are doing. They're claiming you are a kafir. When you just, yeah. Yeah, it's an intellectual terror. So that should not be accounting. And the Shafi'i is the one accepted one. He rejected the Khattabiyya because they regard as legitimate to lie for their own point of view. And the moment someone is regarding as a permissible to lie for his point of view, you cannot accept. Same in war, with the enemy of war. He never accepts your, your, your statements, nor you accept his, because it's permissible in war to lie to the enemy mm-hmm. and to deceive him. Everyone knows that. Muslims know that they can do that to the enemy at war. And the enemy knows that from you, and you know from him. So, you don't believe what he's claiming, mm-hmm. and he doesn't believe what you are claiming. And he's all the time assuming that you are trying to deceive him, and vice versa. That's fair, that's fair, that's fair enough. Because it's a state of war, and everyone knows what he expects in war. But it's not a state of war, the state of narration. And the Khattabiyya took it as permissible to lie for, in favor of their, and, uh, only al Khattabiyya. The other Shia never regarded it as, as permissible. Although, lying is more widespread there because the motivation to invent virtues of the Ali and so on is great. But, but this is not, not a general phenomenon. So if someone is known to be upright and firm, it doesn't matter if he's a khawarij, although the probability of lying in some madahib more because of the devotion and the issues of, 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 uh, of, while other madahibs are more strict in matter of lying, like for the khawarij are known to be much more staunch in matter of honesty and non-lying than the average Muslims, even the average Sunni. They don't permit even lying in war, for example, even in the case of execution. So such people will be as class narrators, if the memorization exactly is, is good. Like, for example, uh, one man at the time of the Hajjaj was known that he never lies. So Al-Hajjaj to, uh, took him prisoner and said, who is your son? He said, he's at, at my home. He, he did not regard as permissible to lie, to cover, although he was have been permitted to lie, to cover his uh, son. So Al-Hajjaj was so impressed, said that because of your honesty, I will let your son go. He was planning to kill the son. And this. So, in the, in the fault of such a tyrant, you are per, perfectly permissible to her. But this one refused her, not going to lie. So he's back, I, when, I, when you took me, it was back home. If he's there still, or he ran away, I don't know. But I, I left home, he was there. So we have such people, it's, the only issue is the meaning, do they memorize properly and write it down and record it? That's what meaning, the only issue. So you have variation in human beings in matter of, of honesty and integrity. And you have people who are easy going with the truth. Very economical, they lie left, right, and center. You cannot take them neither in witnesses nor can take them other narrative authorities. Is this, is this issue? You know, the people and then some people say, no, if he's if he's a mutari, but he's not calling for his bid'ah. But this is even a mistake. I think this is the opposite. If he's calling for bid'ah, meaning he's convinced about what what you call his bid'ah, and he is calling for it, shows that he's he's having the courage to call for it. I would trust one who's calling for his bid'ah more than one who is keeping silent about it. You know, so this is again oddity. You know the uh, the Salafis, they push this idea that don't sit with the people of Bidda, don't listen to... Is it stemming from it's stemming from here, isn't no, it? No, no, not from here. No, no, it's yeah. stemming from, from the scholars. Like, don't sit it with... Because, because they have... Because they declare so many things Bidda, which are not Bidda, and if you sit with people who have argument, they will confuse you. So their leader, Salam Shah, said, don't sit with them. Just the issue of put yourself in a ghetto. If you are in a ghetto, nobody will come to you. That's it. Self ghettoization, that's it. It's not from that. No, no, this is this scholar discussing that. And, and we have an ex- we have example, for example, I remember I was once discussing and say, even Bukhari, one of his shuk is, is, is not only Shia, he's Rafidi, he's, he's insulting Abu Bakr and Omar, but his integrity is uh, in, in impeccable. And someone was sitting there, he became red. How can you say Bukhari is that? So you go tell me that Bukhari. Because you are a donkey, what can I do for you? Nothing can be done if you don't know what's the physical reality. Mm. The same in, 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 in the and so on. 
So <coughs> that was not the problem at that time, although some, some scholar had that problem, but some say, no, you should not tell it for him because you should desert the Mubtadir, so he will, he will be neglected. Or, and, uh, but you, you should not leave good and strong narrations for that. And they are in connection with this, for example, they, especially the Salafi from Saudi Arabia, they respect uh, Joe Zajani. Uh, Yaqub al Jawzijani, and this one is this one is 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 a, is a Nasibi. He, he attacks Ali ibn Abi Talib. So how come that you accept this one, not accept the other one? Mm-hmm. I was once in Salt Ali ibn Abi Talib regarded him as a criminal that he shed blood and so on. Muawiyah is right. Yeah, how this? No, no, no. This is a scholar of Hadith, a big scholar, one of Mashayikh of in Sa'i. He is a thick and half of. Yeah, he's, he's in his narrations beyond the dispute, but. Uh, I said, so how can we accept this one? We accept him because his, his, his narration has been proven to be beyond any, any impeccability. His belief for him, let him face his, his punishment in the Yom his worthy of punishment, or his excuse, he cannot excuse. But it should not affect that. But they are imbalanced. For, ex- for example, uh, I was once sitting with some people, and the one with Hadith, a good Hadith scholar, modern one, on our time, and he spoke... And I told him, Sheikh, you, you, I, I heard his, his tape. So I heard your tape and you were discussing men of transition. And they said, you spoke about Jazajani. And uh, when you were discussing him, they said he was Nasibi. He was uh, hating Ab- Ali ibn Abi Talib. And uh, this is, this is his point of view. And that end, say, Rahimahullah. And you spoke about Ibn Khirash and say he's Rafidi. But you didn't say Rahimahullah. Who well, I didn't say that. He became red in his face. Say, don't do that in the future. Either say both are Rahimullah or none of them are Rahimullah. Mm-hmm. Said, I agree with you, I made a mistake. So, at least this man is honest. So, you are not consistent. This is his belief and this is his belief. But, but if someone hears you, he will think, aha, uh-huh, the Wahhabi are Nasibi. They hate Ali ibn Abi Talib. Like they usually accuse you. And this is an evidence against you. Mm-hmm. You should get out of this mentality. This is a Nasibi Baghir, worthy of condemnation. And this is a Rafi Baghir, worthy of condemnation. And if you say Rahimullah in this because he, this was his belief, even if he's wrong, then you say in the other one. And vice versa. And Ibn Kharash is no less authority in hadith than Joseph Jani, even better in hadith than Joseph Jani. So, so why you say Rahimullah in that and don't say Rahimullah in that? Most likely he's being intimidated by the surrounding. Call him Rafati Khalas. End of the universe. State of shock. But we are alhamdulillah past the stage. So all of this is, all this path is, uh, Neither the claim this, uh, this issue of bid'ah makes any sense in itself. All of these accusing each other are all of the mubtadi' actually. Secondly, the claim that the one calling for his bid'ah, the, prosula, the one who prosula, do proselytization, mm-hmm. should be rejected. The other one is just opposite of the reality because the one who called for his bid'ah means he's persuaded and believed that is correct. And he has the courage to do it. It should be more respected and more, more accepted. And the claim you should reject him because of his bid'ah and not take from him so he's marginalized and, and uh, made to die out. But this is not a correct way because we want to have correct narrations. We want to have as many collections of hadith as possible, as many channels as possible. So we're depriving ourselves from knowledge because the, 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 the knowledge came from a door which we don't like. That's not the way knowledge works. You take the knowledge from wherever it comes and scrutinize it. That's the way to go. So all of these is not. All of that is not. That's different than a fasiq who, for example, drinks khamr and he knows it's haram. Then we know that his, his action and his belief are not synchronized. That's not what uh, applies to Obtadeh. Obtadeh, that's his belief. So how can he be fasiq? This is all nonsense. Tafsiq of Obtadeh, or this tafsiq of Bid'a is all imagination. Does not exist. He says, some people say that the sectarian's trans- trans- transmission is, n- is to be accepted if he is not a proselytizer. And it is not to be accepted if he is a proselytizer for his sectarian belief. This is the doctrine of many or most scholars. One of the followers of Imam Shafi, man be pleased with him, told of a disagreement among the Imam's followers over the acceptance of the transmission of a sectarian when he does not proselytize for his sectarian doctrine. Shafi said, if he is a proselytizer, there is no disagreement among them that his transmission is not to be accepted. Abu Hatim ibn Hibban al-Busti, one of the authorities of Hadith who wrote books, has said, quote, according to our authorities, it is absolutely forbidden to cite the Hadith of a proselytizer for sectarian doctrines. I do not know of any disagreement among them on this point, end quote. 
And this third view is the most just and the most preferable. The first is unlikely and far from the one common among the authorities in Hadith. Their books overflow with the transmissions of sectarians who were not proselytizers. And there are many of their Hadith in the two Sahihs, both as supporting attestations and as primary texts. Um, and this is an old dish for Shaz. I think we started discussing this last time. Just hold his, his, his assembly answers. It's depending upon is the Mubtadi'ah, what they call, what the mm. other one calls Mubtadi'ah. Is he Fasiq or not? Mm. And that can be because he believes this is the truth. That's the problem. So he cannot be Fasiq in that sense. He may be wrong. There are people confusing being wrong and being Fasiq. That's different. So this is number one. Uh, but this is an, uh, a messy issue related to bid'ah and so on, and because of the in the time passed, because of transgression and and, and opposition of various groups and attacking each other, is is, is easy to attack him as a mubtadi'ah and desert him and so on. That's number one. And number two, uh, if we have analyzed that he cannot be fasiq because it's a matter of belief, and he believes this to be correct, that's independent of someone who believes something wrong. Nobody can believe something wrong deliberately, but he may pronounce something wrong. For mischievous purpose, then he's a munafiq and a liar, so that we don't need to worry about this one. This one is clearly of a fabricating type, it's ready for fabrication, there's no doubt about that. And then the question of proselytizer, no proselytizer, I think the, the quoting is not correct because many of the scholars had said nobody should, should take hadith from him, not because the hadith will not be authentic, but because this will be a punishment for him, deserting him. So it's a, an out of desertion, not that his, his transmission is not acceptable. If he transmits, his transmission is acceptable, but he should be not permitted to, to have respectability or anybody attending his classes. That's what I meant. Independent of you, I take this point of view or not, the question in itself, is he reliable authority or not? Yes. A being proselytizer actually says even more reliable because he has the courage to express his belief. He's not hiding it. So this is all based on the same old disease when people following one religion start attacking each other, accusing each other. I think which is not a matter of accusation. Instead of discussing things and analyzing them properly and the right way. Wouldn't, you, wouldn't it need to be qualified as to what they proselytize? For example, no, it's irrelevant. As long as he's believed it, that's, that's an issue. No, no, what it means, for example, say, are they, is it only specifically like Shia types? No, 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 general, general. They were also about Qadari, they were about Mu'tazali, about Khawarij and everything. This is, besides, if you look at the authority for Isra'amra ibn Hattan, he's a Khariji, he says, he's mentioned in Bukhari and other narrations, he, he, he's actively Khariji. He did not uh, do it by the sword, mm -hmm. but he was actively calling. Mm -hmm. So why exclude him? So because the Khawarij are not to be honest and forthright and not liars. Yeah, true. Others may be the same. So it's not a question of that. Mm -hmm. That's the question. And as we discussed earlier, that the condition of being a Muslim is because if he is a Muslim, there will be a great motivation to lie. Mm -hmm. We're talking about Islamic transmission of exams. But if we go to about transmission and, uh, and the report generally, and it is unfair because many Muslims, when they report about history or facts of their own nation, they are trustworthy and reliable. Mm. So Islam is only because we are dealing with Hadith science and then we don't have the security that this one who is a non-Muslim will be honestly. Besides, a theoretical question. Which non-Muslim will devote his life for Hadith science in such mm. a way uh, and memorizing and, and writing it meticulously uh, and exact, to exa exact levels? What would be the motivation? Although still, theoretically, you could uh, really envisage someone who will report honestly. Mm. But this is really very so remote that this question is not is, uh, is uh, purely academic, purely philosophical. But within the Islamic domain, there would be the, uh, there is agreement about most of views. And there is agreement about the issues of kufr and iman is old, the time of the khawarij. We have this agreement about, about the issues of qadr. Mm since early times, and many of the best narrators are Tqadari, of first class, so and some of them are so we have this, what you want. Now, the sensitivity of the Shia insulting, we have also some of the Khawarji and some of the, of the Nasibi insulting Ali, so. So it's, it's, it's imbalanced, especially if you deal with, with so-called Salafi and Wahhabi, they are very lenient against uh, Nasibi. So you cannot blame the Shia if they accuse him of Nasibi and you love the Nasibi. Mm. And they're really covering up your nasib by claiming to be Sunni. So this is just accusation, counter accusation does not get us anywhere. So the correct point of view, the real one, which is relying on fundamental principles of reason and fundamental principles of revelation also, is that you have to examine the person in matter of his reliability and honesty and also in matter of memory and exactness. 
The first one is, is available even for non-Muslims. The Quran specific, clearly specifies that for the people of the book, there are some, if you trust with a, with a dinar, mm. he will not pay it to you back until you are standing on his head to make sure that he performs. And others who trust with a, with a kantar, with a hundred weight of gold, they will give it to you. Mm. So there are honest people under them for the people of the There is this and this. And some, the reason for, for that is that for some, especially the Jews said, we well, have, there will be no punishment for us if we cheat the Gentiles. Someone has this attitude, mm. then you gotta trust him clearly with money. And if he says, no blame on me to lie to the Gentiles, then you gotta trust him in his transmission. Mm. So that's number one. That's number one because of the Jews. The same with the Christian. Generally, they, they tend to be, Average in matter of honesty, and so, but in matter of transmission and so on, they seem to be quite often they take liberties and they regard it as permissible to fix up the text and make it more reasonable. And this disease is also by Muslims. Like, mm. for example, the Baghdadi school is known that they used to fix sometimes they start. This is clear fabrication. Well, they will ban you out completely mm. for the strict hadith scholar. So that's available. And also, matter of witnesses, they are very clear if there's a Quran that a witness of a Muslim can be accepted certain circumstances, like mm. in the matter of, of uh, testimony and so on, and the wasiya, uh, bequeathing and, and will and so on, if there's no Muslims available and so on, which means basically that's what should be acceptable also. So all of these things are. Um, are showing that this is uh, all based on just uh, things which people imagine in their mind. There's not looking to the rea- reality. The other aspect, the, more, the one which is no, no, no le- le- least important, is the exactness and memorization. And there it turns out to be, for, uh, as the high school said, that the most, the biggest liar in hadith are the most pious. Not because they lie, but because they are busy with ibadah and so on, and they don't attend that, that need attention. Mm. Sometimes you need to devote most of your time for hadith. Rising, the writing, make sure, and you have to be also, you have to be also uh, alert. And, and uh, for example, uh, there, are, there are many Hadith scholars know, know that their sons uh, damaged their reputation because they mutilated their books or played with their books. That's the reason, like a great Imam like Ali ibn Madini, he did not permit his own son even to touch the books. Nobody should touch the books except myself. With this handwritten, and someone could, if he imitates writing exactly, he can write something and you don't notice. Mm-hmm. All the most had big hadith scholars, they memorize what they have in their books. So if someone writes anything, they will detect it immediately. But the best thing, the best security, don't, don't permit it to happen in the first place. Don't let it happen in the first place at all. Don't let it know attach your books. So is, just very quickly, is this section then, so this not this strictly part of the hadith science, it's, but it is because they have to discuss this issue. But it, it, it has it has been tainted by all these disputes about the issues of aqidah, what they call issues of aqidah, and so on. Mm. So but then it's, it's more like a footnote, then it's not part of the actual. Oh, it is part for them for yeah. the classical. You see, he's just putting it a section there. But mm. if you analyze it properly and deeply and just overcome all these historic diseases, mm. that is it's irrelevant. And the fact that it's in the early phases of hadith reporting, they were reporting from everyone, as long as his exactness and honesty is, is proven, mm. proves that this is all just, just pure theoretical. Maybe a later generation where we have everything is essentially in books and so on, mm. you can have this luxury. <coughs> but you cannot have it in the time of Tabi'in. Mm. For we have in Tabi'in, we have some of the Khawarij. We have, for example, Ikram, uh, uh, the, the Mawla ibn Abbas, all this, uh, Muslim did not write for him, but Bukhari writes for him, and everyone accepts him as a reliable, exacting authority. Ikram is accused of having the points of view of the Sufriya, which is a mild type of Khawarij, not as extreme as the Zariqa and, uh, and uh, Nijadat, but uh, it is reported that once he passed in the Masjid and looks at, none of these people sitting except a Kafir. For the people even in the world, the Masjid are a Kafir, because they accept the government of some governor or something like that. So he's from Sufriya, but this does not undermine his exactness. Mm-hmm. This is one extreme. We have others who are, who are known to be very negative about Abu Bakr and Umar. Uh, Abdul Razak, great authority. If you take the hadith of Abdul Razak, half of the hadith, a quarter of the hadith has gone into, into the rubbish bin. Was was publicly uh, insulting uh, Uthman. No, uh, even, even worse, and Muawiyah, Muawiyah says, says, don't insult him. Someone, someone mentioned Muawiyah and his presence, said, don't, uh, don't uh, deface or don't uh, make our, our uh, gathering filthy by the mentioning of this man. Yeah. And he's criticizing also, uh, criticizing Uthman quite harshly. 
But for Muawiyah, it's clear. It's no doubt about that. Because you know, in the other hadith on the Kamali hadith book, mm-hmm. he has a quote there from Ibn Taymiyyah, mm-hmm. in line with this discussion, discussion, saying that the best narrators are from the Khawarij, because of their... Yeah, because their Khosh, Khosh, yeah. ...on the Khosh. issue of, of truthfulness. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's, not, it's not a general rule, but, there's, mm. there's, but generally they, they don't lie because they regard as a kabira and kufr and so mm. that's, that's a barrier. But it's not enough because you have to have the exactness and the good memory. Mm-hmm. So all of these things have... So this is, most of that we could say this is like, like, uh, like Allah said about the people of the book. They disagreed about the book mm. because of baghi, because of translation and the uh, 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 just the interest to accuse the other of being wrong and so on. But mm. not because of uh, if, if people would sit on the, these problems honestly and study them clearly and thoroughly, they would have settled them. Many of the questions. But it goes, the baghi goes on until by, back and forth since now. Since then until now. It's not ending. Because nobody wants to sit and give a baghi and give his own desires. And say, let us start with zero. See, maybe you are right, maybe you are right. Let us see all the evidence and put the balance of the evidence in a honest way. Then many questions. Now, nowadays, I was, I'm doing the, the condition of being a Qurashi for the Imam. I would say, I don't believe it, I'm refuting it. The work is, is in progress. Yeah, it has reached now about 100, 150 pages. Yeah. And the part of the argument is that the Saqifa, the argument was in the Saqifa is about the Qurashi of the Imam, mm-hmm. which is utterly a fabrication and lie. It's not true. So I'm working that. Then came the issue what was the stand of Abu Bakr about after Saqifa, what was the stand of Ali? And then if you go to stand of Ali, you'll find so many stories and fabrication you can't believe. Mm-hmm. But going to square zero, I'm able to rebuild from this step by step. And now we have built many of these things which are the only reliable narrations. That's what in Bukhari Muslim what Aisha narrated that Ali gave by her after Ottoman died six months later. Mm-hmm. All other stories are fabricated and wrong. Utterly wrong. Some of them are plainly fabricated. Mm-hmm. And still some, some did not know the fabrication, and some even respectable scholar, they narrate the hadith, say, for example, Dara Qutni narrate this and this without giving the isnad. This is a kind of tadlis. Mm-hmm. Another one gives that narrate narrate from Malik and so on. If you say Malik from uh, Zuhri from the other, you say, must be super isnad. But the man between Dara Qutni and Malik, one of them is a well-known liar and fabricator. Mm-hmm. And the story is fabricated. But uh, the scholar either hide it as a tadris, because this hadith fits his desire. The hadith says that when Abu Bakr went to meet uh, the first portion of the Murtadin in, uh, uh, in a place called Dhul Qassa, Ali went and held him back, and he was went going with the officers, meeting him dramatically. He went with his sword in his hand. That's <laughs> Abu Bakr. Ali held his whole Khalifa Rasulullah, how can you go there and if you are killed, the Ummah will be lost. You stay and send someone in your bear. And, uh, and, and, and I'm telling you, well, like the Prophet told you on Uhud, don't put, don't uh, pull your sword and don't get killed. This had never happened. First of all, the Prophet said, do not tell that to Abu Bakr and Uhud. It was in Badr, say, Abu, Abu, Abu Bakr challenged his own son, Abdul Rahman, who was a mushrik at that time, mm. for, for the well. And the Prophet said, let us enjoy your presence. Mm. Because your son is stronger and you're a weak man. He will kill you. <laughs> so stay back. <laughs> so it's no good going there against Abdul Rahman. That's number one. Uh, that's, uh, secondly, so that's in, uh, secondly, uh, Ali was still angry. Yes, he was defending Medina, but he's defending his wife is there, his children is there, his city, so he will defend. You don't need to defend the Medina to acknowledge the title of state as a legitimate mm. or something like that. If he was, if he was defending, there's no doubt about that. But going and, and holding his, uh, the, the, the foot place on, on the horse and saying Khalifa Rasulullah, so that as if, as if the thing is smooth and bayah had been given, mm. is a pure revocation. It's not true. Mm-hmm. And there's a one, uh, one man there who is absolutely, definitely a liar. There are two men. One is not that famous. Mm-hmm. And the poor guy was accused by the happy said, who is this lying animal? <laughs> <laughs> that was too, too quick from the happy, because this man is not a lying animal. He's reasonable. The one behind him is the lying animal. So I think said, we should transfer this, this, uh, this insult to this man <laughs> as a punishment for that. He caused his, his sheikh, as actually, he caused his sheikh to be insulted. And it is also his cousin. Mm-hmm. They meet in the grandfather. He 
because he's sheikh to be insulted and uh, he should get that uh, that attribute lying animal <laughs> he should and that one who's fabricated these two hadith uh, three hadith he fabricated also the hadith of the Prophet salam hadith story is good Aisha said in Hajjat al-Wada the Messenger of Allah went to the to the graveyard of Hujun this is in Mecca al-Mu'alla and was was very depressed and was weeping I told him, I said, you why are we weeping? He did not tell me anything. He went and then he came radiating and smiling and happy. He said, you went weeping and came happy. He said, I went to Hujun, to the Mu'alla, visited my mother's grave. And Allah revived her for me. She embraced Islam. And then she she was taken back and died. Alhamdulillah, so I'm happy now. Is that Sahih? Fabricated. I'm talking about fabricated, the hadith. <laughs> so... Uh, so, uh, <laughs> on that hadith, I'd have you come and say, who is this lying? <laughs> because first of all, the, the mother of the Prophet is not dead in Hujun, she's in Abu outside Mecca. It's well known mm-hmm. by Tawatul. And also there are many other evidences that's well known. If Allah wants to, to, for, uh, to forgive her, he will do it in Yom Qiyamah. That's the liberty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm-hmm. But it is not happened this way. So this hadith, that, this never happened in the universe. It's just <laughs> this man fabricating, plainly fabricating. So <laughs> the Habib is right to say, but he accused the wrong man, accused the sheikh. <laughs> so he is this lying animal. <laughs> so he is the fabricator about three, four hadith. All of them are about Ali and Fadail. Mm-hmm. One about this mother of the two about Ali and Abu Bakr, and one was about Ali saying, when people ask him who is Khalifa, Abu Bakr say, how could you think that? He he was first in Islam, and he uh, he was the leader of the Salah after the world, and he was... Uh, these are all true about Abu Bakr, mm-hmm. but he put them in that hadith, putting in Ali's mouth, is the fabrication. So that man is there, a lying animal. For example, for example, so... Uh, Going back to our point, uh, is that uh, what was the point we start from? Is that really it's not an issue? Uh, it's not an issue of sectarian. It's a real trust with this and and being ah and this sectarian developed because so many things like that sneaked in the hadith, mm. especially the morsel. They, you this saqifa is a laboratory where if you look at the morsel, it will show you that the morsel, most morsels, most morsels, are filthy. And if you build your religion on it, you will be you will be doomed not to hell, you will be to eternal confusion. And that's the reason all the books of the people, the book you cannot rely on. If you see that with all the hadith science, mm. with all the cross references and the number of scholars we have which are cross referencing each other, and we compare to the early Christian time, which we don't know the people by name, and if we know, we know maybe five, five, ten, fifteen, twenty by name, compared to what we have, for example, the time. <coughs> The one known are from the Tabi'een essentially, because it's, it's, it's agreed upon that really nothing originates from the com- combining of Isa, the 12 or 15 or 20 known names. But the generation after that is the one which wrote down, okay? Although they claim that the first writing was Matthew and so on, but it can be proven that's not true mm. from the text itself. So we talk about the second generation. Second generation, the case of Islam, we had maybe the, the Sahaba or plenty of narration, maybe 100 plus. And several thousand, everyone has one narration, something like that. Then we have the second narration, we have tens of thousands of tabi'in. Mm. And they are course referencing themselves. And various schools of thoughts, various tribes, so they cut this a very, very corrective action. And still you have marasil and you have fabrication and you have weak points. Mm. So how can you trust these, these uh, books of Christians? On? Even if they are written in the year 70, 80, 90, for between 70 and the time of death of Christ, assumed death was 28th. So you can't, you can't really see that it's very well possible to have fabricators who will fabricate something which is even like about something which was a, a few months ago. Did Nabhani do any work for this uh, no. Nakhifa issue? No, no. Where did he take his narrative from then? Which narrative? You know about the uh, Thaqifa and the Bayat of Abu Bakr and... Well, that's not, I, don't, I don't remember which, 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 which narrative he has. The, the only reliable narrative, the first class narrative, is what Omar narrates about Saqifa and the Bayah of Bakr. That's in Bukhari. Mm. If he has taken that, he's right. If he has taken anything else, he will be wrong. Mm. That's a simple, straightforward. Tabari uh, may, may have narrated this or something else. I don't think he has this narration. Maybe he narrated something else. But this one is the only one reliable. Mm-hmm. And the only one who will abs- stand absolutely any criticism, which will give you history correctly, and fits with all other clean narrations. Mm-hmm. But for, uh, sorting it out is... So the, 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 just quickly then, the narrative of Abu uh, Umbin al-Khattab, this is the one for the sermon. 
Yeah. That's what he said to Salman about the Shura, yeah. about Bayat and Bakr. And the one from uh, uh, Aisha. That's the, uh, or, or about the Bayat of Ali, you yeah. mean. Yeah, yeah that's what. Yeah. yeah, that's what Bukhari, yeah. mm. these are reliable ones. Mm. Yeah, no. And all others against that can to be proven to be unreliable one or fabricated. Or just marasil which are unreliable and turn out to be unreliable. People started fabricating even early in, in mid tabi'in time just to, to get to term with the situation which they don't couldn't absorb because they, they, they put fixed something, fixed idea in their mind that it's not possible that Sahaba will disagree. Why should it be possible? They can't disagree. They are human beings, they have desires, they have confrontations, they have misconception. Maybe Ali was really conv- con- convinced that he is more worthy of Khilafah than Abu Bakr. Mm. No problem. What's wrong with that? But they got involved in this, in this in a nightmare, especially by the operation of Bani Umayyah, and it became the non ideological issue. Should it have been? Should that have been an easy issue to resolve? But because of the deviation Islamic gover- governance, that all messed uh, Muslims' life. Until today. So the faces are there. But alhamdulillah, this will be cleaned, inshallah. I think this is a, will be a good historic piece. <laughs> Um, a separate question, um, sorry, related question. Um, a lot of this sectarianism is kind of redundant because you have multiple chains from people who aren't sectarian, but anyway, say it's always a proselytizing. No, no, there, there's some simulation which is only from the sectarian. No, that's nothing redundant. Uh-huh. No, that's so, not. that, so effectively, you can reclassify hadith uh, from it starts from then, then? Oh, yeah, this proves that all these theories are false. That's the reason I'm saying this is all nonsense. This is all utter nonsense. But are people making the disputation? now of a particular narration because of the sectarianism no, they, can't. they can't they can't they can't because the scholars of hadith has agreed and the community of this is a community of scholars if mm. you if you if you don't take what what they have unless you bring a good evidence hidden here and there nobody will respect what you say mm. because it's, it's, not, it's not because this is an objective science well, so we're not talking about a few tens or twenty or thirty who have agreed in Baghdad to do something. No, we're talking about scholars who are in Medina, we have scholars in Kufa, we have scholars in Basra, and the scholars of Kufa are generally inclined towards Shiism, while the scholars in Basra are generally anti-Shia. Mm. And the scholars in Medina are in between. Scholars in Egypt are another category, where the scholars in Khurasan are more to the Sunnah. And all of them are collecting each other and criticizing each other. So if you have from this all, you, 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 you get what... Uh, uh, you get really the the, uh, the dream of things, then, then you get. And then oh, the criticism would be on objective grounds. All this criticism based on sectarianism will not stand. It doesn't stand. What means that? You know, if someone's a proselytizer and they've effectively written him off. So until this day... No, no, they say they should not narrate for him, but in reality it has, it has happened and they narrated, and some of them are first class. Mm-hmm. And they have proven by their narration. You can check all their existing narration. It turns out to be first class. Uh, maybe so, what, sorry, maybe what Rush is alluding to is that you have groups today who quote people, various ulama from the past, saying that don't sit with the people of Billah, don't oh, sit yes, with the people of They can't of quote as much as they like, but that does, but does not uh, affect a hadith and a hadith authentication. Mm. Because we have Bukhari and Muslim and all scholars through history discuss that and analyze it and criticize some hadith on various grounds. Was barely anyone criticized on the uh, on the ground of of, of uh, sectarianism. Mm. Those issues of of, of uh, confused isnad, it's not te- really hadith technicality. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's it. So this is this is all redundant here. Uh, you know, they show someone's from a sect. Mm-hmm. They quote hadith that supports their sect. It does, it's irrelevant. This is all, all wrong. Because if you are from a sect, for example, for example, you are inclined to Shiism, you will be digging and searching for a hadith which are supporting your point of view. This is natural. Who said that you are, this means that you are a fabricator? While others may hide some hadith, and we have examples of that. Many hadith which have political connotation were hidden by many scholars or cut in pieces. Ahmed bin Hamad is guilty of that, as we have say, shown in our, in our, in our Muhasabat uh, al-Hukam. Various hadith, he didn't like the end of it because it says you have to change the ruler by hand, and he doesn't like that. His uh, uh, Allah, it's called fitna. So he's put his mind, although this is theoretically not the case, should be not that the theory. Mm-hmm. And his argument is that uh, these hadith are questionable because the hadith say obey even if you are beaten and so on. Who said that these hadith are valid and these are valid? And you have to put all of them together in context. 
in the proper context and both conditions. If you are unable to have the fiqh of them understood properly, then his 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 equal and equal in in time also in authority is Hakim Lawi narrates the same hadith in full. He didn't hesitate narrating the, the remaining of the hadith, the, the end piece of the hadith, and other later scholars narrates it also. You know the issue that the Prophet said if you lie about them, then you reserve yourself in health. Right? Yeah. That's, that's, that's the main... Yeah. This as well, that when you no, this is not a lie. You are not reporting it. Lies, you are inventing something. This is not a lie. This is just you are hiding something. Lies, but th- this is uh, this kind of tadlis also. This is this is the cousin of lies. Not a straightforward. Say, I, I'm not convinced that it's true. You can say that. And maybe Ahmed Muhammad is not convinced it's true. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's very well possible if he, yeah. he thinks there's a... But, but, but we caught him now, the four or five hadith, he did something like that. Other scholars like that did not do that. So I would regard them as more honest and reliable authority because they are not partisan. But he is partisan, obviously, in that. He has, he has a point of view. And he let that point of view dictate to the hadith. If you are that hadith, I don't know what is the meaning of that. Let the scholars analyze it, that will be good. But he's not doing that. In various hadith, not only one, two, three, four, four, five hadith like that has passed there. All politically connected. Essentially with the uh, accounting rulers mm-hmm. and using the sword and things like that. That's his, that's his sensitive point. That's the point of his sensitivity, especially. Mainly. And also, many scholars of the hadith who relate to Ali and the issues with Ali and the Bayah, they cut any tale which they don't like. Leave it. Just, just avoid going into this nightmare. Instead of going to report, he said, "Leave the others to analyze them." Analyze them. First, he reports the hadith of "Man kuntu maula fa'alim maula," and someone asked him, "What's the meaning of maula?" He said, "Don't ask about this. Just leave it as it is, as if you're talking about the divine attributes." <laughs> <laughs> Because they're unable to answer to those who are, yeah. uh, obviously, especially in the time of Muhammad Hanbal, this issue of uh, al-bayt and the right was so dominant that al-ma'moon himself, the Khalifa, came to the conclusion that they have been deprived of their rights. And he took bay'ah as uh, wali ahad for uh, the son of Musa al-Khadr. Mm. And it could have been chained to, the, to this chain, but the son of Musa al-Khadr died before al-ma'moon died. Mm. And the way to the Far East. Some people can Ma'amun change his mind and order him to be poisoned, but I don't think so. Ma'amun is more honest and more forthright than that. Mm. Although he got stuck in this nightmare of Khalq al-Quran and so on, but he's objectively, in matter of, of, of balanced government and good government, he's no less, no less even Dr. Hakim Mutair in his uh, book, uh, uh, Freedom or the Flood, mm-hmm. he says uh, Al-Ma'amun is better than Amr ibn Abdul Aziz if he would not have been stuck in this issue of Khalq al-Quran. In, yeah, in government, in governance, in exactness, in, in every respect. But this, this missed all his history. Because he did not have a correct theory of adoption that the state should not involve the issues of aqaid or ibadat, personal ibadat. If that's the most, why are you interfering? You are, you are responsible for protecting the domain, you are responsible for collecting the zakah, for collecting the taxes, and leave the people to whatever they want. They are doing that in their massage for centuries without any problem to the ummah. And they will do it for thousands of years without any problem to the ummah. Mm. The problem if you don't do what you are supposed to do as a head of state. Protecting the domain, collecting the taxes, distributing the wealth justly, that's it. And there's no disagreement about the, the definite, absolutely definite things about Islam, which is as far as the Muslim and the Kafir. The moment it comes to issues what Muslims disagree, the state should abstain. The moment the state gets involved, it will ban itself and ban Islam. And it will not help anything. Will not, will, will not benefit any point of view. Because that point of view later was then out, outclassed by the other point of view, <coughs> that was Khalq of Quran. And, and the Mutawakkil came because he was corrupt. He was not as good as, as the previous one, Mutawakkil, the one who revised the called the Bid'a himself. He was one of the most corrupt. He was not like Ma'mun, not like Mu'tasim, not like Wathiq, who have conquered and who have beaten the Roman into their place. And uh, he was busy drinking, and he has one, one, uh, one uh, clown. Who, uh, who was bald and having big belly 
and he was when he was drunk, say, so bring that clown, the clown come and dance, open his belly and folk, so they said, uh, Amir mocking Ali ibn Abi Talib, because Abi Talib had a big belly and was bold. That's all what Abu Talib But Ahl Sunnah say, he finished the bid'ah, mashallah. And all these, and the continuous drinking and the negligence of the waters, and all of that, that's all forgotten. Because they got stuck in that. Exactly like now you have what's happening now with, with so-called jihadi now, exhausting themselves and demolishing graves and so on. Mm-hmm. And damaging all the... Co- problems in Libya. Now. Yeah, and causing problems in Libya, which will, not, will bring Islam and Muslims nowhere forward. Yeah. It will bring them backward. And so on. In Somalia and so on. Mm-hmm. Utter stupidity. Even if it is desirable and uh, has to be done, it is not a priority. Not the first, not the second, not the tenth priority. Mm-hmm. The Ummah now is a state, a state of change. It has to, to, to go back to fundamentals of Quran and Sunnah, not to uh, cosmetics. But uh, oh, <laughs> the brain is there. One, one idiot in Egypt recently said, I pray to Allah that Mursi will do what Amr, Amr ibn Asr did not succeed to. Demolish our all the Sphinx. <laughs> That's all what, what he's worried about. <laughs> oh, Morsi mentioned it, yeah? Yeah, he, he said maybe Morsi will do that. Who said, who said that? One of the, one of the donkeys <laughs> there. One of the donkeys yeah. there. <laughs> Fortunately, I don't think that's his top priority right now. Should not be, not even bottom priority. Should, should not be priority at all because the question should be asked at this idiot, what has Amr ibn to do with that? It's Omar who did not order him to do that. Mm. Omar ordered, Omar, Omar know about that, so where was that? Everyone reporting what was in Egypt. They never ordered anything like that. These are historic artifacts, no relevance, leave them as they are. Nobody touched them, except his idiots at later times. <laughs> and he said, I hope he will do what Amr ibn Has did not succeed. He could not dare saying Omar did not succeed. <laughs> Amr ibn Has. But also just govern on behalf of Omar. So Omar is the guilty one if there's any guilt. He doesn't use his brain. And all the Sahaba are guilty then. These people are just, just brain, they are brain damage. <laughs> 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 if you look at them, they are really brain, brain damage. <laughs> well, the, the best thing is to make a public communique and say, look, what about this? We, we did that, we did that. But, but the problem is that, problem is that the, the people have got used to hear the blubbering of these, but they don't hear what you are saying. It's simplistic, that's why. They, they, yeah. The yeah. gullible can swallow it. Yeah, yeah. It's very ABC formula. This is yeah. the origin of shirk, the grave. Mm. People start worshipping it. Ah, oh, this is the origin of idol worship. Yeah. Forget what the Quran and Sunnah <laughs> says. Forget the hadith of the eclipse. Forget all of this. Yeah. Oh, <coughs> a simple formula, because mm. I'm a simple-minded man. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then I'll, I'll go and smash a grave. And these, and these simplify, but it's, it's, if, you, if you challenge them and explore them publicly, they will be weakened, but it, it's a process. It mm. takes time. Right. Anyway, we should go back there. So all of this is just, uh, just what I say, مختلف الفي الذي الذين أتوه بعد ما جاءوا من بغيم باب. The disagreement between the stools of the people of the book after they have received the knowledge, بغيم باب نعم. Because of بغي transgression. Just I want to prove you wrong. I have a problem with your tribe. I have a problem with your political position. So I take another point of view. That's بغي. Not because the evidence of the علم was not the علم is very clear. And relations are very clear, alhamdulillah. And especially conserved nicely. Uh, so if that issue, we can, we can say the following philosophically. If the issue of Ali when he gave bay'ah is an issue of, uh, rele- relevant to the dhikr, that must be protected. And it's indeed protected. If it is not a matter of dhikr, then it's irrelevant to protect it. It's not relevant if he gave bay'ah before or after. It's not relevant. So if it's an issue that is related to the dhikr, Allah will protect it, and it indeed it was protected. I'm not claiming it's an issue related to the dhikr, because many things are, which are not dhikr are also protected. Mm. The pyramids are there, they are not dhikr, they are protected. <laughs> no problem, they're still there. But if it is, then Allah will make guarantee that it's protected. And if it's irrelevant, then all your discussion is empty. Or is Ali better than, than Abu Bakr or Omar? Or it's irrelevant. Just say, imagine the Khalifa must be the best. Who said that? What do you think the Khalifa is the best? The best in what? And everything, this is, this is demanding the impossible for any tool, because only Allah knows if you are the best in everything, or the best in ultimate calculation in Yawm Al-Qiyamah, only Allah can weigh you. And if you will say they are people of Qiyas, they should have known about the story when Abu Bakr have a dispute with the Jew. And then uh, the Jew said, by the one who, who exalted Musa above Al-Alameen, elected Musa of Al-Alamin. So Bakr was angry when he elected him above Muhammad and slapped him. And there was a <laughs> dispute. So they went to Rasulullah and the Prophet prohibited Abu Bakr. Don't make comparison between the Messenger of Allah. 
Some of the things compared to Allah saved the Quran. Allah made some higher and lower, but He is the one who compared, not you. Leave it for. Well. So if that's for the messengers, for well, the Quran sees that Allah has made tafdil. So who gave you the authority to make tafdil between non messengers? Or the messenger you could because they're unfallible, you can classify them, you see their sharia. You, you may have more objective reason to classify. And you rely on the Quranic text and their ranking and so on. Like, for example, you could say from those mentioned the Quran, after Muhammad, before, except Muhammad, Ibrahim must be the best because he's the, he's the Al Qanasi Imam and he's Imam of all mankind. So he's Imam of all the ones follow after him. So all the issue remains is how he's ranked between him and Noah and, uh, until we have the hadith with the Prophet classified them. But still he said, you don't do it. Allah does it. So why do it? Do it the Sahaba. So what means it? Then we refuted by Prophet Abu Salam. He sent a battle campaign in the leadership of Amr ibn As, a Muslim of yesterday, under his command is Abu Bakr and Umar. And Umar was not happy with that. Abu Bakr told him, he appointed him because he knows about the war and warfare and the battlefield better than both of us. He's a military commander, so in the military field, the military commander should, the one qualified in the military discipline should be, should have the leadership. If nobody have any doubt that Abu Bakr and Umar are better than Amr al and everything, in dunya and akhirah. <laughs> should be no doubt about that. <laughs> Neither the Salafi claim otherwise, <laughs> nor for the Shia is no question because Amr al for them is a kafir, <laughs> and a conspirator, or you know, anybody else in the universe. Mm. For the Khawaj also is a kafir, together with Muawiyah. So there's no doubt about that. All Muslims agree. There's agreement by all Muslims. Mm-hmm. But still, he, he was more worthy of commanding the, the battle campaign. Because he's more qualified. Does it mean the messenger will betray his trust? No. It's a clear example that it's a matter of qualification for the job at hand. job of his state is to protect the borders, to fight properly the enemies, to collect the taxes. That may need another qualification to someone who will, will pray at night and fast all days. Mm. This is another qualification. Another time, if you get all of them in Pajab accident by great luck, like uh, in the time of, uh, of, uh, but who, who says all these four are better than Zayd ibn Haritha, for example, the adoptive son of Muhammad Azza. And Aisha said, if Zayd would have been alive, said Allah made it sure that Zayd is, uh, is murdered in the life of, because otherwise it may become like a, her- like a hereditary monarchy. There may be a danger of becoming because he was even if the adoption was 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 uh, was cancelled, was abrogated. Like and still, and she, Aisha said clearly, if he was alive, the Prophet would not have appointed anybody else except him. Zaid bin Hatha. This is a Sahih Hadith. Hamza was murdered early. Who is better, Hamza or Uthman ibn Mabrun? Jafar ibn Abi Talib. Abu Huraira was saying the best of the command of Muhammad is Jafar ibn Talib. He's better than Abu Bakr and Umar. He has no doubt about that. Ibn Hazm has an odd point of view. He said the wives of the Prophet are better than all the companions because they are in the same rank with them in paradise. So why make that a condition of who is the best and so on? And we find in the book of Aqaid, the problem, put in the book of Aqaid, and Abu Bakr is the first Khalifa and the mm. best of them. Who said his so sister must be the best of them? What? Cross that out of the Aqidah. Maybe he is the best, maybe he's not. And all agreed on him to the last one. <laughs> why should? It's enough to have the majority. The Messenger of Allah, when he went to fight in Uhud, a third of the army left, committed trees, treachery, and let him down, when left to the Alp, though I've never saw the shield. So he has an opposition of 30%, or 33% were in opposition in Medina, to the Messenger of Allah, which is Kufr. There's no other political descent. It's a clear Kufr. Push it slowly. So, so what's the problem? Did that undermine him being a messenger of Allah? No. That's the problem. So they, they, they construct things in their imagination and they build and they become a crowd of house. For example, I, if the research shall have finished and we get maybe one day someone to translate it, I have quote about 40, not 40, maybe just 10, 15 quotes from all through history, from the time of Mawardi all the time to modern time. Quoting the hadith of Zaqifa wrongly by fabricating in it. The Ta'im of Quraysh, which was never said in Zaqifa, number one. Secondly, say, since that said and the Ansar surrendered to it, she was not said. And after that, in the Bayah, everyone agreed on it, so it must be Ijma'. So Ijma' based on fabrication. <laughs> Because it fits the desire of some people. And they got stuck in it. 
It's unbelievable. <laughs> so it kind of comment on everyone scholar like that said, MashaAllah, consensus based on a lie. <laughs> like the ijma of the Christian that Jesus is divine. <laughs> ijma based on a lie. But also, also it accumulates and accumulates and becomes also like, like a matter of... Uh, if you repeat a lie enough, isn't it? Yeah, it spreads widely and fits the people's desire and uh, fits some historic pattern and, and nobody dares discussing it and uh, everyone declaring dissent with that. Is, is, uh, and they say, they say well, do you know that the Khawarij and some of they said that being a Quraysh is not a necessity, they say. And they said they should not be bothered about their disagreement because they should be discounted. They're not part of Ijma anyway, discounted. <laughs> So discount anyone you don't like until you have ijma' of yourself alone. You know, I am an ijma'. <laughs> Everyone else is discounted. <laughs> so it's the one more Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's the way it will end. You will end up if, if you do it consistently, you will end the ijma'. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying is ijma'. Anything else, you are discounted. You are fasic. You are questionable. Your belief is questionable. Yeah, Your mother is of question origin. You are a question cast. You will find some kind of question in anybody. Everybody else. So the ijma will be myself. This is all nonsense. <laughs> so it's not going to lead anywhere. Say, wala ibrata in the, wala ibrata bi mukhalafat al khawarij wa ta'ala. They don't, they don't bother about the disagreement of khawarij wa ta'ala because they, they don't count. Suddenly they don't count in ijma now. So prove to me would consistently with also attitude that they are kafir. You can't. So they must be in the ijma. But they are not in the ijma, so it's not an ijma. Mm. Or you prove that they are kafir with absolute certitude. But all the generation of the Sahaba until now never declared them to be a kafir. So what to do with this dilemma? It's just a circle argument going in circles and circles forever. Later on became the ijma of the four madahib. So Ibn Hazm, La Ibrata Ibn Hazm, he's out of Ijma, he's Zahiri, with questionable credentials. He's only used for Madahib. All the knowledge and all wisdom of the universe is in this form of Madahib. Anything outside the form of Madahib is questionable. And so on. Anyway, go back to So this is all these the time, the time of Baghi and Udwan. Not really based on a, a scholarly rational or even textual evidence. Uh, point number 10. The transmitter who repents from telling lies in the hadith of the people and from other forms of wrongdoing. His transmission is accepted unless he is repenting from deliberately lying in the hadith of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, in which case his transmission may never be accepted, even if his repentance is sincere. This is in accord with what is repeated from several scholars, including Ahmad bin Hanbal and Abu Bakr al-Humaydi, the teacher of Bukhari, we found that the authority Abu Bakr, a Sayrafi, made a general declaration in his commentary on Shafi's Risala, saying, We may never again accept the hadith of any transmitter who has a report we reject because of a falsehood we found to his discredit, even if it appears that he repented. Once we rate someone's transmission as weak, we may not deem it strong later. End quote. Well, this is very confusing. The first part is, if someone... Is exposed as a liar and then, then he repents. Then we have still a nagging doubt that because he lied earlier, he's a human being. He's not unfallible. We have no proof that he has now stopped being a liar and so on. So they will be always the nagging doubt that he may be, uh, would be, will be subject to the same desires and the same, uh, and the same, um, uh, enticement mm. to lie. All the probability is becoming lower, but we still have that. We, we, have the, the, the reason we accepted him in the first place is that we believe that he, there's the barrier from lying in the hadith of Allah. There's a barrier preventing him from that. If that barrier has proven to be broken, then it's very difficult to, to believe that has been erected. There may be some very rare and, uh, and exceptional situation we have an external evidence supporting that he be, become absolutely reliable and non-liar, yeah. But that's, that will be singular cases. I, I have no example in my mind how this can be proven. And well, the, the issue of lying is that if someone is found to be deliberately lying, he's, he's gone. Yeah, and we, yeah, and we don't know if he, even his claim of repentance or appearance of repentance is not a deception. Especially mm. if he has rumbled. Yeah. 
If he's been discovered, then that could just be saved mm. in case. No, um, some some admitted themselves without being like, for example, uh, a, a man called Abu Juzay, Tarif uh, Ibn Nasir. He was the narrator of Basra, very dominant narrator. And uh, he was uh, felt ill, and uh, he felt that he may be dying. So he went to various people say, listen, the hadith I dictated you from this. His, his matter of exactness at the moment is, is un- unbeatable. The problem is his honesty, uh, which I claim that I heard from this and from this from Qatada. I didn't hear from Qatada. It was a man in between, which I dropped. Mm-hmm. I said this at least. No, he did not always say an. He said, Haddathani Qatada. So this is lie. Mm-hmm. So someone said, good that you did that, that you repented to Allah before your death. This is good, so we can clean that. And this is, you have done good for your akhirah, not our dunya. Then he recovered from his disease, and then he continued reporting the hadith the same way he used in time past. So his repentance mm-hmm. is clear that he did not repent. His claim that not he repent. So, but even if he did not question, will acceptable as a matter of judgment, really, is you cannot be, be mm-hmm. but there will be always the nagging doubt because this is like addiction because it, it becomes addictive. Especially if he gets away earlier, he may say, oh, I got away earlier. Most people are stupid. I will get away. Forever. Mm. And that, that's the point. And there will be always a shadow of doubt. So I, I think it's a, unless they have really a compelling evidence, I don't see an example, unless um, uh, the Prophet vouched him that he became sincere. That's something. This is from Ghaib, yeah. Mm. That's why I understand that. But otherwise, it's really very, it's, it's bad, yeah. It's really very, very, uh, very, uh, yeah. That's, uh, <coughs> you, you cannot really uh, have gathered the internal conviction that he is he's honest and not liar. He will be exacting and precise. Yeah. That's the point. But the other one said that the one who has yeah. been declared weak, this, if we if we found weakness because of his memory and so on, exactness, that could be for various reasons. That has to be classified more detail. If if the weakness was because he narrates from him from his memory usually because he wants to show that I'm having good memory and not going to his book, and people rebuke him and say, listen, your memory is not good. Even if you trust your memory, you should dictate from your If he dictates from his book, and we know that we took or taken from his book, that's fine, because mm-hmm. his book is Sahih, for example, in that case. So you have to see exactly what, what the circumstances, the case of weakness. Secondly, someone could be have declared weak by many scholars just because of a mistake, mistaken identity or mistaken issue there. So if someone comes and corrects, say, no, that's not true. Uh, there are examples for that, some Akhbari, like Arwakili. There's a dispute since long time. Uh, is he is he, uh, is he weak or he's strong? Ahmed and few others said he is matruk. And some people say because he was hiding that he's Shiaism. <laughs> and he was using taqiyya. And some others say no. Other scholars say no, he's trustworthy and uh, authority. Uh, up to modern time, Ahmed Shaka say he's, 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 uh, he's thiqa. Even one, uh, one orientalist analyzed his historic reporting, say historic reporting is to be the cleanest and fits with most other reports better. So he should be more reliable than others. Mm-hmm. And this is an independently orientalist who uh, issued his, his book, Al-Maghazi. So, so you have all this. I am inclined to, to that he's a thiqa. So this is another issue qualifying with it. Is, is this classification correct or not correct? Yeah. So all of these things has to be has to be taken to school. So, the issue of lying, yes, I agree, that it's very difficult without revelation or something miraculous to come to the conclusion that this man has become really uh, now honest and, uh, and, uh, and uh, trustworthy. But, if we can some way ascertain that, that uh, he repented and his whole lifestyle and character changed, then we may Especially if he shows all his previous lies and mistakes and exposed them, that, that could be could be an indication. So there's no absolute in that. You have to see all the balance of evidence in these things. Yeah, the, but uh, when uh, the people discussing hadith sciences and the uh, and the conventions of the people hadith and what the experts say, they want to make things to want to simplify and categorize things. But these things are very complex and difficult to categorize. Mm-hmm. All you think is that you have to see the balance of evidences, but most likely. Unless they're very compelling balance of evidences, 
the one who is liar. Especially if he is exposed as a liar and surprised. But if he himself come forward and declare that and repent and correct, then that may be a sign of real repentance and so on. Especially things which people did not detect from him. He himself admitted them and so on. That would be a strong supportive evidence that he really repented and want to correct things. Still leave the question mark, okay? Mm-hmm. But there will be a question mark. Mm-hmm. So he will not be the absolutely liar authority. There will be always a question mark. Then there will someone say, this man did fabricate in time past, but he admitted it and correct all his fabrications. So on Allah Alam, there remains some question mark there. So it will be always this, uh, this, this nagging doubt there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Then he mentioned that this is the one of the points where testifying in court and transmitting hadith differ. The authority, Abu Muzaffa al Samani al Marwazi, mm-hmm. has said all of the hadith which come from someone who lied, even in a single report, they must all be rejected. This is similar in sense to what Sayyrafi has said, and Allah knows best. Mm-hmm. Not Church. rejected, but not regarded as, as stand alone authority. But if they are the similar to other one, then we, we did not lie on that. Because mm-hmm. there is corroborating evidence. But it will be helpful. It can help in, in corroborating. Now, for example, this, this uh, Abu Juzay I just mentioned, his, his, his uh, lying was because he has the, the, the desire, they call it, Urugul Isnad. This is the, like a devil, which the devils, many of people hadith, they want to have this not high. And that's what moves some to do tadris. They drop an intermediary either to, uh, to, uh, uh, just to give the in self-satisfaction that I, re- I, w- I was studying at the sheikh and I took all my, my all his hadith from him directly. Mm. So the not is short and nicer. But very often you, you are with the sheikh only one year and others were tens of years accumulated. You will not be able to get all his hadith. So you narrate from the others. And that's where some people do it at least drop the intermediary. Or the intermediary is questionable. You drop him to make the isnad or your hadith looks nicer. So the desire to make the isnad nicer is the devil there. And these people are there's in danger. And this is also something happened to some of the weak narrators, not to necessarily liar. The danger is that to fix the isnad by if it is more cool for statement of Sahabi to lift it up to the Prophet, make it a nice hadith. Or if it is morsel, to add a, ta- a sahabi, which is, for this tabi'i is usually narrated from, sorry, Abu Nadra is usually narrated from Abu Sa'id al-Khurdi. So add Abu Sa'id, that's one of the hadith and the, mm. the saqifa in a piece where, so make a, so Abu Juzay is narrating a hadith in which, which is morsel, like other authorities are narrating it morsel. For him it's also morsel. Mm. So although I know he's a liar, I come and say, we know that he lied, but his lying is usually fixing the, it's not making it nicer. So if he narrates it more so we can take that as a, as a corroborating evidence, not a standard one, evidence, mm-hmm. as corroborating evidence. Because this type of people will not make the Mosul monster. They will not cut someone already. They will mm-hmm. put someone there rather than that. They will make the Islam looks better rather than worse. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's the, that's the situation with these people. So in that head you take it. So it is, it is, uh, it is more like uh, uh, more balance of evidences. Mm-hmm. So. The same with, with weak narrators generally. Most weak narrators, most weaknesses happens that the weak narrator, that the weak narrator is, is lifting the hadith. Mm. It's a statement of a Sahabi. He understands the meaning and then he rewording it as if it's a messenger of Allah saying it somewhere. Because he's, he's not, memory is not good. If, assuming that he's not doing deliberately. A famous example, the hadith with many salafi report that it's better for one of you to be hit with a, with a needle in his head rather than touching an elegy, a woman not belonging yeah. to him or something like that. This is, this is the statement of, uh, Ma'akar bin Yasar, not okay. a statement of the Prophet. Can, can you write something on this? Because this is the Oh, it is, it's already, I have already written it. Yeah, please, I'll pass it to you. Yeah, is it translated as well? Or is it uh, no, it's not translated. Okay, well, so, I'll, I'll have I'm, a copy of that. So it's that's not a big issue. So, no, it's not a big issue. The hadith, the, 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 the strong narrator, who is the man of Bukhari, the Muslims narrate is clearly that Ma'at ibn Sayyid is saying that, his own statement. The weak one is saying Ma'at ibn Sayyid, the messenger of Allah said, mm. and lifted it up. So that's why the weak narrator, so, so if a weak narrator bring you something morsel, that's not as serious because the weakness will be in lifting it up or something was more poof. Yeah, because that's, that's what, what, what weak narrators, uh, 
That's the full tape. That, that's yeah. that's the, the, the main problem, lifting up, not cutting down. Mm. The strong ones, the very reliable ones, if they are afraid that they are not absolutely certain, like for example, Ayub. Ayub is known, if you get a snad from Ayub going to the Prophet, which is connected, then you can't be absolutely firm, because it's known that if he has the slightest doubt, he will cut it. Mm. If he has the slightest doubt that this, this Sahabi was there, he will cut it because he learned to be a liar against the Messenger of Allah. I cannot tolerate that. I will not be able to do that. So he will make it only marfu'a if he's forced to. There is no escape. It's absolutely certain. He cannot escape. He said, mm. If he can make all a hadith marfu'a, he will do the wa'af. So he will make rafa only if he's forced by the evidence that's mm. irrefutable and und- undisputable. Mm. For example, so for the people like that, how do you really the big authorities you can't rely upon in hadith? They make absolutely without any doubt. So, so, Shu'ba, Shu'ba is, is having a, a, the obsession with, with the Sami'a too, from mm-hmm. his Mashaikh. He makes sure that the Shaykh, so if they have hadith from Shu'ba, then the Shaykh has, has pronounced Sami'a. Except few hadith he said in these the hadith I did not verify or qasada that he said Sami'a too. Three, mm-hmm. Four hadith, they are known, he relates to them. And anyone else is, is definitely sama. So for so all these things, they are jewels you can't catch. So things like that. So even this, this Abu Nusayr has been exposed as a liar. Abu Juzay, I mean, Nusayr Abu Tayyip. But ultimately, if something comes from him which is, which is against his, his disease, heart, disease of heart, which is fixing and making it not nice, then we can say, here he didn't definitely don't, didn't lie because if he would have lied, he would have fixed it in a nice way. <laughs> and it is not fixed, so it is as it is. Because we know that the matter of, of memorization is undefeatable. As he has no problem with memory. Because when he was sick and admitted the people he did, he told them this hadith, and this had mentioned a number of hadith, about 13 hadith, and told them where it is exactly in the book. So there's no issue with memory. He knows exactly what has his, his chief what he did. He knows exactly where everything is. The problem is that he has the heart disease, the desire to lie. Because of this shaitan, ah, make this not nice. You must have better shiuch than the others. And this is a disease. It's very dangerous. Shahwat al tahdith And this disease, many have suffered. One of it is, for example, is to say, ah, give the sheikh a book and let him read and claim he reported it. They call it talqeen. Mm. And this is really a crime. That, then the disease is, is adjust, the, 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 the blame is adjust, is attached to the sheikh, not to you. But actually, if someone is caught to be doing talqeen, he should be also blamed, because it's a criminal act. You give the sheikh a hadith book that you read from that, and he reads and says, haddathani an fulan, and you know he's taught his hadith, mm-hmm. and the sheikh is mughaffal or stupid, or easy, can be, can, can be given easily for talqeen. It's a calamity for both. Sheikh will be banned, and the one who quoted that would be you known that he's a mulaqtan and he's, he's, he's an evil character. But some do that because of shahwat al-isnat. Mm. 